Assalamu alaikum. Today we're solving questions from chapter 2. The question reads, starting at time t equals 0, an object moves along a straight line. Its coordinate in meters is given by the equation x of t equals 75t minus 1 multiplied by t cubed, where t is in seconds. When it momentarily stops, its position is. So this is basically a, a covers the topic of motion in one dimension or motion in a straight line. The equation of motion is given as x of t for this particle or object. x of t should equal 75 t minus 1 t cubed. And the question is asking for when it momentarily stops, find its position. So I need to find the answer in meters, in position, in, in, in meters or in distance or in position. So, but the condition given is that when it stops. So I need first to derive my equation to velocity or speed, then equate it to zero, get the time when it stops, and then substitute it in the uh, position or the coordinate equation. So velocity equals dx by dt, or the derivative of the coordinate, which equals the derivative of 75t is 75, minus the derivative of this, we drop the power and reduce the power by 1. Now, if I equate this to the speed, this is the condition when it stops. So I need to equate it to 0 to find the time when it stops. So this will give me that 75 should equal 3 t squares, or t squared should equal 25. And I know that this equation has two answers, which is t equals plus or minus 5 seconds. But I can exclude the negative answer because this is not physically possible. So then I substitute in the coordinates at time equal 5 seconds. So x at t equals 5 seconds should equal 75 multiplied by 5 minus 1 5 cube. And this will give 250 meters, which is the coordinate of the particle when it momentarily stops. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Today we're solving questions from chapter 2. The question reads, a ball is thrown vertically upward. After four seconds, the ball returned to its initial position. The maximum height above the initial position of the ball is. So basically, a simple sketch will show that there is a ball. This ball is thrown vertically upward. And then it reaches the maximum height. So this will be called the maximum height. Then that ball will retain back to the ground. Few things to know that at maximum height, the ball will stop. So V at max height will equal zero. This means that that's why it reached maximum height. It stops at maximum height. And the time for the whole trip is four seconds. Because of the symmetry, and this is basically under the influence of constant acceleration, so I can use the equation of motion, and I can tell that the time taken for the whole trip is four seconds. So the time taken for the first trip from the ground, let's call it point one, to two, is basically two seconds. This is the time taken for this trip. So we go back to the question, and he needs to find the maximum height above the initial position. So I need to find this in height, which is h. So the most appropriate equation of motion, first I know that I need to use equation of motion because it is basically motion under the influence of a gravity or a, a, a constant of acceleration g. So I need to use the equations of motion. The most appropriate equation of motion is that number 4, y minus y0 equals v final t plus half g t squares. 
The reason I selected this equation, because I don't have the distance, I only have the time, and I don't have even the initial velocity of the ball, which should be the maximum velocity. So, I need to find this term, which is y minus y0. Y minus y0, this is y0, and this is y. So basically, it is the h, or the height, the maximum height I need to find. The final velocity is V final is at, re at maximum height, so it should be zero, multiplied by T is zero, plus half G, which is 9.8 meter per second squares, multiplied by the time for this stage of the trip, which is two, not four. Four is for the whole trip, so T squares. So if I uh, solve this, H will be, 4 divided by 2 by 9.8 meter per second squares multiplied also by second squares. So this should give 19.6 meters. So this is basically the answer of the question, but I need to make a small modification to the question. What if I want to find the initial velocity of the ball? I can find it now because I know the distance. The most appropriate equation to use probably will be y minus y0 should equal v naught t minus half g t squares. This is the unknown and I need to find. And now I can utilize the results of the answer of the question, which is 19.6 should equal v naught and the time of the trip is also two seconds minus half 9.8 meter per second squares multiplied by the two second squares. So this, I, this term I found it earlier, which is 19.6, taken to the other side, it will be 19.6 meters plus 19.6 meters divided by two, this should equal V naught. So, V naught or initial velocity of the ball equals 19.6 meters per second, which is also the maximum height. To understand also the dynamics of this problem, the ball started with the maximum initial velocity, which is 19.6. Gradually, as it goes up, it will lose, due to gravity, it will lose its velocity until it reaches maximum height, and at, at that maximum height, the velocity will be zero. Then the ball will go to the ground, back to the ground, or initial position, and start to uh, gaining speed until it reaches the ground with the same velocity it was thrown initially upward. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Today we're solving questions from chapter two. The question reads, the position of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by x of t equals 3t squares minus 2t cubes, where x in meters, t in seconds, at what time is its acceleration zero? So the question asks for the, the time when the acceleration equals zero. So I need to find the acceleration, equate it to zero, and then extract the time. So I start with the position Equation x of t equals 3t squares minus 2t cubes. So to get the velocity, velocity will equal dx by, or speed, dx by dt, which is the first derivative of this. To derive it, it is 6t minus 6t squares. Now I need to derive again to go to acceleration. So acceleration will be the second derivative d squared x by dt squares, or it is the first derivative of the velocity dv by dt, which is 6 minus 12t. Now I need to find the time at the when the acceleration equals 0. So I need to equate the acceleration to 0. So now 6 will equal 12t, which gives that t will equal 6 divided by 12, which is half a second, which is the answer of this question. Thank you.
Assalamu alaikum. Today we're solving questions from chapter 2. So the question reads, a ball is released from rest at the top of a building. The time it takes the ball to fall halfway to the ground is 1.2 seconds. Find the total time it takes for the ball to fall from top of the building to the ground. So a simple sketch will uh, make this problem very easy. So I have a ball, have a building, top of a building, and this ball is released, which means V0 equals zero. So it said released from rest. And then this ball, while it's released, will start to gain speed. So it goes down because of the acceleration is due to gravity. It will, its speed will increase, it will accelerate, and its speed will increase, increase, until it reaches the ground at maximum speed. But he gives you an information that at halfway to its fall, this is h over 2, h over 2, the time it takes at halfway equal 1.2 seconds. So from the point of release to the halfway of its trip, it takes 1.2 seconds. What is the total time from the top of the building to arrive to the, or reach the ground? A common mistake will be to assume symmetry and to say because it took 1.2 seconds to reach halfway, so it will take 2.4 seconds. This is not correct because after it passed the one point or the halfway, it will, its speed will be greater than in this stage, which means the time taken will be less. So I expect less time from this point to this point. I expect less time. Let us see. So how to solve this problem? What if we... We don't have ma many infos about the question. How if we first find the total height of the building, which we can, and then we plug the total height to find the total time. So in order to find the total height, I can start with the equation of motion. Y minus Y zero should equal V naught T minus half G T squares. So this is my Y naught. And this is my y. I need to find, I, I need to utilize the time for this trip, for this halfway, utilize the time to find the total height. So, then I can say that, first, the initial speed is zero. So, this will mean that y naught is h, and y to here is h over 2. Because at here, it will be h over 2, here it will be totally h. So h over 2, final, minus initial is h, equals minus 9.8 meter per second squares multiplied by t squares, which is 1.2 second squares. So this will mean that minus h over 2 equals minus half 9.8 meter per second squares, 1.2 second squares. And we can cancel this with this, and the negative sign with the sign. Oh, now I can get h, the total height of the building. So h will be 14.1 meters. Now, since I find the total height of the trip or of the, or of the building, I can utilize it to find the total time of the trip by using the same equation y minus y0 should equal v0 t minus half g t squares. Now, y minus y0, which means 0, the y final when it reaches the ground here, so 0 minus initial when it's at h, so h should equal also for this trip, the v0 is also 0 because started from here to here. So it is 0 minus half 9.8 meters per second squares, and then the t square, I don't know, this is the unknown that I need to find. So this side is minus h, and the h I found from the first part to be 14.1, so it is minus 14.1, should equal minus half 9.8 multiplied by t squares. The only unknown is t squared, and then I can cancel this with this, so I can 
find that T from your calculator is two answers. One is positive, the other one is negative. It is 1.7 seconds. This is the positive answer. Notice that the time taken from the top of the building to the ground is 1.7 seconds, while the time taken for halfway is 1.2 seconds, which means the time taken from halfway to the ground is only 0.5 seconds. And this is a proof that the ball is accelerating or gaining speed as it falls down. Thank you very much.